Good morning, everyone. My name is Joanne Hughes. Welcome to Assumption Parish. Today is the second sun 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Father Stephen Huber will preside at this morning's liturgy. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, as we gather together on this Sunday to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we're reminded in our gospel of the dangers of falling into the temptation of pride. And so, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us begin by calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him, 
or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, my soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. My soul, soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hand and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to, be, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, and acceptable and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his holy gospel, working with me well in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God, forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are thinking not as God does, but as humans do. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my follower, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit anyone to gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will anyone give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each according to their work. The Gospel of the Lord. How
How many of you have ever been in a situation where you're having a conversation with a person and you think you know everything there is to know about the topic and so you're talking and talking and you're sharing your wisdom and then all of a sudden you hit a point where you realize, oh, I really don't know what I'm talking about. I'm in way over my head here. And in that moment, we have a choice. We can either humble ourselves, swallow our pride, and say, you know what, I'm in over my head. Or we can keep trying to fight and keep trying to insist that we know that we're right and that we know what's going on. And oftentimes, if we keep trying to go down that path of insisting that we're right, there comes a time where I know many times in my life I've ended up kind of putting my foot in my mouth because I say something that makes the other person realize that I'm in over my head, and then the whole conversation just kind of breaks down. We kind of get a very similar situation with St. Peter in today's Gospel which is a very interesting situation considering what we just heard in our gospel last weekend. Think back for a second. We end our gospel last Sunday with Jesus saying, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed the truth of my being the son of God to you, but my father in heaven has. And so I will call you Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Jesus has leaped this high praise upon Peter. And the unfortunate thing of separating these Gospels over two weeks like this is sometimes it makes us forget that Jesus' next words, teaching his disciples about his passion and death, come right after his words to St. Peter. It's not like there's a break and then a couple of weeks later he's like, oh yeah, by the way, this is going to happen. It's right after Jesus has told Peter what his role in the church is going to be. So I can imagine there's a sense in which Peter maybe is feeling a little bit of pride on his part. And he thinks, you know, the Lord has just given me all this authority and he has told me whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven and so on and so forth. So I don't like this suffering and this pain stuff that Jesus is talking about. So I'm going to tell him, no, Lord, this can't happen. This doesn't sound right. And in doing so, Peter has that put his foot in his mouth moment because the Lord, who just moments before has heaped high praise on him, turns to him and says, get behind me, Satan, for you are a stumbling block to me. Quite a harsh turnaround, isn't it? But what he says next is important for understanding everything that Jesus is trying to teach us in this lesson about his passion and death. He says, you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Reminder to us from this saying of Jesus is that when we look at the world, when we look at situations and circumstances that are going on around us, we might think we see this whole big picture, but we are only seeing a part. We are only seeing a tiny bit of the full reality that God sees. And we only see that part. And if we make judgments based only on the little bit that we see, we can run afoul just as St. Peter did. So often we look at the suffering and the hurt that we see in our world, whether it be natural disasters like the hurricane that just hit Louisiana, racial injustices that we see going on all around us. And we think, where is God in all of this? How can God be in so much evil and so much suffering? But I can tell you, having lived through a hurricane when I lived in Texas, that it was God maybe wasn't present in the destruction, but he certainly was present in the aftermath, in the work to rebuild 
in the work to help people to get out of the place where they had lost everything. And that's what we're called to hold on to, to remember that we're called to trust in God and not give in to that temptation to pride, to think that we know everything about what's going on, but to trust in God's plan and trust that God sees the bigger picture. In the second part of our gospel, Jesus gives us the remedy to that pride. And he says that if we truly are to follow him, then we're called to deny ourselves, take up our crosses and follow him. To live in that place of humility, to live in that place where we seek to do the will of God and not our own will. And if we do that, We may have struggles in this life on earth, but we will gain eternal life in heaven. St. Paul puts it another way in our second reading that we hear today when he reminds us to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of our minds so that we might always discern what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And so in the midst of our own day-to-day lives, in the midst of our own unique sufferings and crosses, we are called to continually discern the will of God and ask God to show us how through all of those little moments in our lives, even though we might not choose them ourselves, he is working to bring about redemption and our salvation and to help us grow in holiness and love. May we seek always to follow the will of God so that we will not be stumbling blocks to others, but that we might lead others to the kingdom of heaven. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess the faith that unites us all. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our souls thirst for God and his mercy. Let us pray for the needs of our brothers and sisters, trusting in God's providence. For all the baptized to be transformed by the renewing of their minds through the word of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders to be willing to make unpopular choices that require self-sacrifice for the benefit of the common good We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the Windsor Heritage Catholic Family of Parishes to sustain each other as we strive to make the necessary self-sacrifices to be a missionary church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families returning to school or work to do so safely and with peace of mind. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Beirut, as they grieve and struggle to rebuild the city, economy, and community, following the recent deadly explosions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering in body or mind, 
to be united to Christ and blessed with strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have been called from this life to experience the glory won by the cross of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for the people in Louisiana and East Texas who are suffering from the effects of Hurricane Laura, that God will grant them consolation and strength as they begin the long process of rebuilding. We pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful God, like Peter, we wish to avoid human suffering, but also desire to be faithful to Jesus. Give us the courage to carry the cross of discipleship so your love may be known by all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, and all the clergy and ministers of your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Just a reminder to please follow the direction of the ushers as we approach for communion. We'll begin with those seated on the far side, and then we'll work our way from back to front on this side of the middle, and then back to front on this side of the middle. So please just wait for the ushers to dismiss your row before coming forward to receive. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one announcement, which unfortunately we forgot to announce last weekend. This weekend, the diocese has asked us to take up a special collection to aid in the recovery efforts for the people of Beirut as they seek to recover and rebuild after the explosion that took place there a few weeks ago. As you exit the church today, there are two baskets on the table. One has a sign that says for Lebanon, the other basket is for the regular parish collection. So if you would like to donate to aid in the recovery efforts in Lebanon, please make sure you place your offering in that basket. Don't, and then if you're just donating for the regular parish collection, make sure it gets in the one that's not marked for Lebanon. If you're not prepared to donate here and now, or if you're joining us online in our live stream, if you go onto our Facebook page, um, you have to scroll down a little bit. I might see if I can bump it back up, but there is a link on how you can donate and some more information about where to donate and stuff like that. So you can click on that link and donate directly, or if you donate here, then through the diocese, the donations will be forwarded to the proper agencies. And this coming Tuesday, September 1st, marks the official beginning of our family of parishes. So please keep us all in your prayers as we begin this process of, or continue this process of transition. And we will be providing you more information over the next weeks and months. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.